Glory, hallelujah, the shalom of the Lord, nothing missing and nothing broken. Let me tell you something. Let me tell you how amazing God is. When the Holy Spirit comes into your life, he allows you to see in the supernatural. People see with their, their regular eyes. God allows you to see their hearts. He allows you to see the spirit behind them. Let me tell you what happened. So, Reverend Dr. Cleotha Robertson described Pharisee, the heart and heart Pharaoh. He let his baby sister, the spirit of Jezebel, <laughs> who has reigned heavy in my family, probably since she was born, actually, ain't no telling. <laughs> they allowed her ex-husband to evict me and my 14-year-old daughter out of the house. Mike, the house Ahab, he owns a house in Adams Farm. He owns a condo. He owns that home. He owns a house in Reesville. He owns a lot of other properties. He owns a dump truck. He works at a Piedmont Chemical Company. And he owns a lot of stuff. But see, in 1999, he bought a six-pack of Old Dude's beer. <clears throat> and he wanted me to dance for him. At my aunt's house, when they were still married, he wanted me to dance with him. Yes, he did. And I said, no, absolutely not, because I'm not that. I don't know who you think I am, but that ain't what I do. Ever since then, they secretly held a grudge against me. <clears throat> he made my grandmother my mother a promise. He said, I'll make sure that Tanya and her kids are okay. He lied. Because on October the 18th, Reverend Robertson turned that chestnut, Michael Chestnut, they had me and my daughter put out of the house when I wanted to take my daughter to school. And I had been telling them, but they didn't care. Every time I would talk to call a Cleotha, I would cry. I would tell him my story, but I would cry. He was grieving the Holy Spirit. God said, he too will mock in your day of calamity. He said, Joshua, be a good courage. He said, he said the heathens. And I say, boo. Prophet said the shepherd, woe to the wicked shepherd. You scattered the flock. You stood by idly and you act like you act like you act like it wasn't your problem. Yes it is, says the Lord. Yes it is. This is your responsibility. Don't call me you win, but we're not related. We're not the same. Because we're not driven by the same same spirit. The scribes and the Pharisees and the Sadducees and all you ites. That's right. That's right. So the curse is on the land. The eyes of the Lord run to and fro. He's looking at your heart. He sees your heart. He's got x-ray vision of your heart. He knew what you was thinking. So did I. So did I. I know that's why you didn't call out to me. That's why you didn't reach out to me. Because you ain't care. You have. You don't give because you don't have it to give. You don't have the love of God in you to give. It's for a show. You want a pulpit at Soundview Presbyterian Church. Well, I'm going to ring the alarm. Because you don't care. Hmm. That's right. That's right. I'm hissing at the heathens, and I'm going to make it a public display. Why should I hide? I'm not. I'm not afraid. I'm not ashamed. The spirit of Elijah. The spirit of Elijah speaks the truth. The truth. The sword of truth. It's a consuming sword. It's a consuming fire because it's the sword of truth. How dare you sit on a pulpit and try to preach the word of God when you don't even, when you let your niece, your mother's daughter and her child get evicted, you haven't called me, you haven't reached out to me, you don't care nothing about me or my children. So why should I care about your, uh, <laughs> how people perceive you? I don't. I want them to know the truth. And they're getting ready to get it. All of it unfiltered, unadulterated, unapologetic, because they need to know the shepherd. They need to know who's actually sitting on that pulpit. Somebody who let that door, they, 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 you let me get evicted, and you didn't do nothing about it. Shame on you. Shame will be your promotion, and I'm going to help that. I'm going to assist in that agenda. God said, take your hand up. He said, focus on me and exposure. This is a season of exposure. That's right, because you ought to. You ought to be shamed. I would never sit back and watch somebody I love get evicted and not say nothing and not stop them. I would never do that. We're not the same. The one thing you gave to me was calling me Beamish, the Beamish seed of Jesus. That's right. That's the one, that's the only good thing. And a couple of things you told me, you said people don't care that much. That's true because you was talking about yourself. And then the second, the only other thing you told me that 
ever did me any good was, what are you willing to do? That's right. Now, now here we go. Now, his, you told me, what are we willing to do? When I fled from a, a, a ex, a drunk, an alcoholic, an abuser, and I fled with my baby, looking for refuge, and your sister, Esau, when Esau told me and the baby to get out, you said, what are you willing to do? Hmm. Mm hmm. That's right. Hissing at the heathens. Boo. Step down off the pulpit. Repent. You go talk to God. You humble yourself before the Lord. Because I'm mad. That's right. I'm mean and that. I ain't had too much long suffering. You ain't never had to suffer. You've been spoon-fed everything. You ain't never had to suffer. You ain't never been. Sinners and publicans done more for me than you ever done. Because <laughs> the shepherd's like you. That's right. I'm not done. And I'm not mad. I might take that back. I have a spirit of indifference to your feelings. I don't hate you. I don't hate you. I have a spirit of indifference to how you feel. I have a spirit of indifference to... To, to 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 whatever. Anything dealing with how you how you perceive yourself. I have a spirit of indifference now. I'm returning the favor. I'm meeting you where you at. This is called reciprocity. Deal with it.